Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today I wanted to do a little comparison looking at how to load out Empire State Troops and Empire Missile Troops just uh, to try and figure out what weapons are best to give these. So uh, just kind of looking at this first, let's look at State Troops. They uh, come in two varieties, your regular State Troops and your veteran State Troops. The veterans, all they really get over your regular state troops is plus one to their weapon skill, which is certainly worth it going from three to four. You know, two points a model is not that big of a deal. By default, these guys are coming with hand weapons and light armor. Then uh, you can also have them take shields for uh, an additional point per model. Um, and you can also add additional weapons, uh, halberds, and thrusting spears. Each of those are one point per model. Uh, then the other important thing here is that you can give them drilled as well. That's just one of my favorite abilities right now. Uh, the ability to just change your formation on the fly, I think, is really uh, valuable. So uh, let's dig into this a little bit. So if you just go with hand weapons, you're getting like no combat buffs at all. They are one-handed, so you can uh, take a shield and go to a 5-up armor. Your halberds give you plus 1 strength, plus 1 AP, armor bait 1, but they're two-handed, so you can't take a shield. And then your thrusting spears, you get to fight in an extra rank when you're not charging. That is important. Um, they're also one-handed weapons. It took me a little bit to realize that these were not a two-handed weapon, because they definitely seem like they should be. Um, you can, uh, you know, because of that, you can also take shields, get them to a five-up armor. And they will also get plus one initiative when being charged. So a little bit of an advantage there on defense as opposed to offense for initiative and uh when they are uh, either already engaged in combat or getting charged, uh, they'll be able to fight in extra ranks as well. So, you know, effectively going to at least double their uh, combat effectiveness, uh, you know, depending on whether or not uh, you have initiative over the enemy or not. So there's not really any point to... Uh, take hand weapon shield other than it's cheap. Um, you know, it's just the inexpensive way to go. Your halberds versus spears is really like the question that you need to ask. Um, you know, looking at your halberds versus spears here, your halberds are going to have that extra strength and extra AP. Your spears are uh, going to also uh, get extra attacks um, when they are not charging. So basically, basically, um, this is similar to the kind of profile difference that you'll get when you're looking at, um, you know, a some sort of like a lance for cavalry versus you know their hand weapon in subsequent rounds um or uh looking at like then that versus your you know other combat weapon options for cavalry uh that you're looking at because you have that difference when you charge and when you don't charge but compared to cavalry this is inverted for your spears um, and I also just busted this out between um, state troops and veteran state troops just to get an idea of what the difference is between these. Um, personally, I think there's not really a lot of reason to ever take regular state troops. Just always go veterans. Um, you know, your spears are, in a nutshell, they're not as good as your halberds on offense when they charge when they don't charge they are better than halberds um, they also are going to uh, get that extra pip of save 
Now, personally, personally, I really don't rate that, like, at all. Um, I don't think armor tends to really matter that much until you get to, like, at least a four-up armor save. Like, a, a five versus a six is just not that much. Um, you know, a, any armor piercing at all is just going to cut right through that and forget it. Like, you just don't have armor. So, I think the, the more important thing here is their... Uh, their combat output so i think uh, you know looking at this really my choice is going to be halberds because they're going to be more reliable they're always going to be the same i know all the time what to get out of my halberds uh, also on this calculation i didn't include um armor bane into those uh they uh it, it certainly is going to make them a little bit more effective. The, the math is just a, a little bit too not worth it. Um, also, as usual, this is, uh, you know, getting these output percentages are against, uh, you know, threes across the board and uh, a save of five up. That's my standard way of evaluating troops. Um, so, you know, it, if you're looking at I think particularly if you get to veterans, it's just it, like your your marginal difference is just so like when your when your unit charges with spears, they just don't do anything compared to halberds. So you're really stuck with a unit that is taking charges all the time. And for infantry, you know that's certainly um, I think kind of a little bit expected. But you really want to be able to get that kind of like extra bonus in the first round of combat. So, yeah, especially when you have things throughout this armory that can give you hatred to get those rerolls. Um, I apologize for the background noise if anybody can hear that. I'm actually doing this uh, out in my backyard at the moment. So, uh, probably have some uh, background noise, but it's nice out, so I wanted to be out here. Uh, so, yeah, that's really my choice here is going with the halberds, which is interesting because that was also basically the choice in 8th edition, if I remember correctly. Spears, getting to fight in that extra rank can be good. The problem I really see is that unless you can fight first, unless you get that charge, so many of your guys are going to die in those front ranks that I think it just doesn't matter. I would rather go with that higher quality of halberd attacks and be able to have the benefits when I do actually get a charge off. So definitely uh, things to consider there. Up next, looking at missile troops. So this is really just a difference of handguns versus crossbows. They are uh, otherwise identical. Um, your handguns are gonna be one extra point per model. And I think that really kind of shows in the handguns. So the big difference here is you've got handguns are AP1, Armor Bane 1 at 24 inches. Your crossbows have no AP but Armor Bane 2. So um, your handguns are generally going to be a bit more powerful. Um, in these percentages, again, I didn't bother counting in the uh, the armor bane into these statistics. It the math is complicated for just how little of an effect it's actually going to bring out of it. Um, you know, AP is really the consistent thing that we need to worry about with this. So uh, the the bottom line is really on these that your handguns are more powerful than crossbows, but your crossbows are more likely to get short range attacks, um, you know, because they have that 30 inch range. So they don't get that minus one to hit. It's not a huge difference in total range. Um, you know, the short range, uh, handguns versus short range crossbows it's a difference of three inches and I think the difference in power is substantial enough that I again really just want to go with the handguns like 
all the time. I also have pretty much everything built as handguns already anyway, and I don't really want to... Um, I mean, I do have a bunch of crossbows too, but I don't really feel like, you know, trying to lean on crossbows for this. And I have a ton of handguns. I think I have like 40 or 50 handgunners. So, yeah, it, I guess that's kind of it for now. Uh, not a crazy in-depth math hammer on these, but I think for state troops, um, pretty much always want to go veterans, and I personally prefer the halberds. Uh, although I can see the argument for spears, and if you're just looking for cheap infantry, then you can go with um, the, uh, you know, just the hand weapon guys. Uh, for your missile troops, I definitely like handguns better. Um, and I think I really am liking these more as small detachments that are going to hang out and... Um, you know, because you don't get those second ranks typically shooting, you want a, a small line of these, I think, and just try not to get them charged. And then if they're a detachment, they can stand and shoot against the enemy uh, when they charge a big unit that they are attached to. So I, I think that is really kind of the way to go. Like, I would say like five to seven models in a detachment of missile troops. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Um so that's it for now, guys. Uh, kind of a simple one today. Uh, hopefully it helps somebody out. I'll talk to you all later.